In May of 1960, a US U-2 spy plane was shot down over Soviet airspace. The issue was brought before the United Nations Security Council, with the United States accused of breaking international espionage laws. They had invaded the sovereign territory of the Soviet Union, which is an act that can be considered a declaration of war. When the time came for the United States to defend its actions, Ambassador Henry Cabot Lodge rose to speak. Rather than giving a direct defense of the U-2 spying, Lodge did something curious. He revealed to the council a large hand-carved replica of the Great Seal of the United States, which he had brought with him. Lodge went on to show the audience a secret about this seal. The carving was not one piece, but rather two. Sitting in between the two pieces was a small listening device. The seal, he explained, had been a gift to the American ambassador to Russia back in 1945. It was hung above the ambassador's desk for seven years before its hidden purpose as a bug was discovered. Until this moment, the American government had never acknowledged the device. Lodge now used its existence to make a clear point. Espionage between the United States and the Soviet Union was not confined to one side of the conflict. Both sides knew that a war of spying and deceit had been waged throughout the globe for decades. While Lodge's point was to diminish the importance of the U-2 incident, his admission opens the door to a fascinating history that lies in the shadows of the Cold War. The Cold War contained many stories of spycraft and intelligence operations that did not become known to the public for decades, and probably many others that are still kept secret. For this video, we are going to tell one interesting story from each side of the conflict. From the Russian side, we will tell the history and backstory of that listening device that Lodge presented, known as The Thing. And from the American side, we will tell the story of an untraceable heart attack gun designed for assassination attempts by the CIA. To take on the risky job of hiding a listening device inside the office of the United States Ambassador, the Soviet Union did not turn to a master spy, but rather to a group of children. In the summer of 1945, before World War II was even officially over, a group of Russian students called the Vladimir Lenin All-Union Pioneer Organization visited Avril Harriman, who was the United States Ambassador in Moscow. The children presented the ambassador with a large carved seal containing the device as a gift of friendship. As the two sides were technically still wartime allies, the ambassador thought nothing of hanging the seal in his study at his residence. For seven years, the device hung in the study without anyone on the American side knowing its true purpose. Meanwhile, the Soviets were able to eavesdrop on all sorts of highly sensitive conversations. This is how the device worked. It was designed by a Russian inventor named Leon Theremin. Before creating the bug, he had been most famous for inventing a musical instrument called a theremin, named after himself. The invention was a huge hit and became one of the first electronic instruments ever to be mass produced. Throughout the 1920s, Theremin had toured around the world doing public concerts with his instrument. However, he eventually spoke out against the Soviet state and was imprisoned in the Gulag in 1938. While in prison, Theremin was tasked to work in a secret laboratory with other arrested scientists and engineers to invent devices that could be used for spying. His design of the listening advice was nothing short of ingenious. To understand how it works, think of the device like a giant wooden Oreo. Sandwiched between the two pieces of the wood was a layer of thin membrane that connected to a small antenna. The device had no power supply or battery. Instead, an external transmitter would activate the device by sending a radio signal from outside. The Soviets listened from a van parked nearby the ambassador's office whenever they needed to spy on diplomatic conversations. The device sat in the study without even a hint of suspicion until 1951, when British radio operators started hearing American voices coming through Soviet airwaves. Convinced there was a bug somewhere, a series of sweeps was performed in search of hidden devices. Finally, a State Department employee located the device in the seal and sent it back to Washington to be analyzed. Once the bug was discovered, the Americans decided it was best to keep their knowledge of the device secret. No public mention of the device was made until its reveal by Henry Cabot Lodge of the United Nations Security Council that we mentioned in the opening. On the flip side of the coin, espionage and spying were not confined to just the Soviet side during the Cold War. In fact, some of the activity engaged in by the CIA during this period is so shocking that it seems straight out of a movie. One example is the invention of a so-called heart attack gun. The design of the weapon came about as part of a CIA program known as MK Naomi. You might have heard stories about the program's infamous precursor, MK Ultra, which calls for its own episode. MK Naomi focused on secret developments of biological warfare, focused particularly on developing ways to poison crops and animals. One of the scientists working on the project was named Mary Embry, and she was given a different task. She was asked to research poisons that could be used to induce a heart attack in victims. Mary eventually determined that the ideal substance for such an aim was a natural one. 
shellfish toxin. Using Mary's research, a weapon was developed that could fire a small dart containing a combination of shellfish toxin and water. A modified Colt M1911 pistol could be used to fire the darts with accuracy up to 100 meters away. Once the dart hit its target and the toxin entered the target's bloodstream, the poison would spread to the heart and shut down the victim's whole cardiovascular system. The target would quickly pass away with the death appearing to any bystanders exactly like a heart attack. The dart would melt away and the toxin would not show up in an autopsy, leaving no evidence of the murder. The existence of this heart attack gun remained hidden until 1975 when as part of Senate investigations into illegal CIA activities, Mary and other figures behind MK Naomi were brought before a committee led by Senator Frank Church to testify about their work. CIA Director William Colby brought the heart attack gun with him before the committee for all the world to see. Its existence was seen as a concrete example of the secret and deadly work of the American intelligence community. Photos of senators holding the heart attack gun even made the cover of the New York Times. It's not known if the heart attack gun was ever actually used to kill anyone. However, evidence uncovered by the church committee point to the likelihood that assassination attempts by use of the device were at least tried over the years. For one thing, the church committee revealed that 5.9 grams of shellfish toxin had been collected and stored by the CIA. This amounted to nearly a third of all shellfish toxin ever produced. Secondly, it was revealed that assassinating world leaders was not only something the intelligence agency was comfortable with, but something that had been attempted numerous times. Public figures and leaders hostile to the United States, such as Cuba's Fidel Castro, the Congo's Patrice Lumumba, and the Dominican Republic's Rafael Trujillo all had assassination attempts sanctioned during the Cold War. In 1976, President Gerald Ford signed an executive order that outlawed the government from engaging in political assassinations. So at least according to law, weapons like the heart attack gun would have no place in today's world. However, if the history of Cold War espionage teaches us anything, is that there is probably more secret work happening in the shadows than any of us would have ever imagined.